Well, hello everybody. Today we're going to take a quick look at Us, the latest film from writer-director Jordan Peele, starring Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke. The story focuses on the Wilson family, who are taking a nice relaxing vacation to Santa Cruz. But despite what all those advertisements might lead you to believe, it is not all fun and games at the Santa Cruz boardwalk. The matriarch of the family, Adelaide, played by Nyong'o, once had a traumatic experience there as a child and isn't too eager to go back. But her lovable goofball of a husband convinces her to go along with it. And he soon came to regret that decision. Because that night, a bunch of doppelgangers showed up at their house and everything went to shit. It still amazes me that one half of Key and Peele is now making horror films and apparently hosting a revival of The Twilight Zone. Dude's got range. Of course, by now, we're all familiar with his debut Oscar-winning film, Get Out. And this is a very different film from Get Out, which is good when you're a filmmaker, having depth is not a bad thing. While Get Out did have its scares, they were really more of a backdrop for the commentary about white people who claim to publicly deny racism while privately being racist as shit. Us, on the other hand, seems to be more focused on actually scaring the audience, and it mostly succeeds. But that doesn't mean it's not saying anything. There is still plenty of symbolism going on here. It's definitely saying something about identity and how it can be shaped by our environment and our upbringing, and how we can be our own worst enemy. In this movie's case, quite literally. And it still touches on racism a little bit. There is one moment in a flashback scene to the 1980s where Lupita Nyong'o's character, a younger version of her, is visiting a house of mirrors at the Santa Cruz boardwalk which in that time period was like the shaman's mystical woods or something like that. And it had a picture of what would nowadays be considered a very racist Native American stereotype. And in the present day, it's now Merlin's magical forest or something like that. So while it is perhaps closer to a typical, for lack of a better word, horror film than Get Out was, Typical is not necessarily the right way to describe it. It does feature a black family at the center of a horror film, which is not terribly common, and it's also a matriarchal family. Adelaide is very much the head of the household here. And this movie can get creepy as all hell, and it does a pretty good job of scaring the audience without resorting to jump scares. I don't think it had a single one. But Peel has not forgotten where he came from, and he still flexes his comedy muscle quite a bit. There are some very darkly funny scenes in here. Uh, one in particular that sticks out was a scene where the family members are arguing over their respective kill counts, and they're doing it in a way like it's just a totally casual thing to have an argument about, in like the same way someone might argue about who the better basketball player is, Michael or LeBron. It's like that, and it's just hilarious. Nyong'o plays the film's central character, or I should say the two central characters, and she has to do a lot with these roles, and she is more than up to the task. The way her double moves and speaks with that hoarse voice is just so unsettling. And I think Jordan Peele described her movement in this movie as Adelaide's doppelganger as Queen Cockroach. That's very accurate. And the lesson to take away from this is Nyong'o is great and she needs to be in all of the movies. Duke is playing a very different character from his role in Black Panther as M'Baku. He is just, as I said, a lovable goofball here, and I enjoyed him very much. I love the moments where he tries to act macho and just fails miserably, which is all the more hilarious considering his size. He's like six foot five. And more than anything, I just wanted the goofball dad to survive this movie. I was like, do not kill the goofball dad, please. Uh, I'm not going to tell you whether they actually did or not. I'm just saying I really did not want him to die. Like, you can kill the kids if you want, but leave the dad alone. And that is horrible, and I'm sorry, but I stand by it. And speaking of the kids, the daughter, played by Shahadi Wright-Joseph, man, she was good. That creepy-ass smile that is just permanently etched on her doppelganger's face. Oh, so very wrong, but at the same time, so good. She is definitely someone to keep an eye on. So it's probably still too soon to say Peel is one of the greatest horror filmmakers of all time, considering he's only two movies in. But if he keeps this up, he is on his way. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you do so, and it probably is worth seeing in a theater with a crowd reacting to the film along with you.
I missed out on that experience by not seeing Get Out in theaters, and I was not about to make that mistake again. And that's all I have to say about us. Till next time, take care.